I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor to Bernie. Um, he's talking today about effortless transformation. Is that a thing? <laughs> Is it a thing? So, um, <laughs> yeah, let me tell you how I came up with a title for this because uh, I've, I, there's a, there's a coach I've been following for a number of years. He's actually a kind of cute guy, and I actually shared a room with, his, with him once, but that's as far as the, that story goes. But he has, a, he has a membership site, and one of the programs in there was called Effortless Transformation. I thought, i got to find out more about this. And as I, as I um, investigated it, I started to realize that this was based on something called the three principles. Um, and I'm curious, has anyone heard of the three principles? No one's raising their hand. Okay, good. It's also known as the inside out revolution or um, uh, subtractive psychology. These are some of the other names that it goes by. Um, and maybe before I get to is effortless transformation possible, I'd like to share a little bit about uh, what, it, what, what it's about. And I have a few, a few slides to, to share with you. So the person who came up with these three principles was an, a chap by the name of Sidney Banks. Now, Sidney Banks, he was a Scottish welder, no education. And he had, a, he had an enlightenment experience. And out of that came his teaching of the three principles. And I've listened to this guy speak, and he's, uh, he's, he's Scottish, uh, or was Scottish. He's no longer alive. And, you know, just listen to him. I can hear this, this piece that comes through him when he's speaking. And this is, I want to share a quote of his that just be, briefly explain, explains the three, three principles. So the three principles, three formless principles, are mind, consciousness, consciousness, and thought. And these explain the entire range of human behavior and feeling states. And they are responsible for the creation of all human experience. So that's a, that's a lot of words. Um, so what does that mean? Um, so the three principles, mind, and when we talk about mind here, it's not, it's not, he's not referring to the mind that, you know, we often refer to as our, that's kind of like what goes on in our brain. It's more of the universal mind or life, you know, the, the energy of, of life that is flowing through us or the divine or God or infinite intelligence. At least this is my understanding of it. So it's much more than, than uh, it's, you know, the universal mind and, and also the, the way our mind is connected with that. It's just really the energy behind everything. That's kind of like what, you know, th and by the way, this is a spiritual, this is a spiritual uh, base um, set of principles. And it doesn't need to be, doesn't, I don't know if it needs to be taught that way, but it definitely is spiritually based. So the second principle is consciousness. And that consciousness is really, it's the awareness of our experience. So, you know, we, we are living and as we go about our life, we know that we know that there's things happening because we have consciousness. We have awareness. And then the third part, and this is the part that is most focused on in all the teachings I've heard around three principles is thought. Okay. And thought is more than just the thoughts that go in in our head. It's really how we experience life. And so it includes our, sen our senses, our thoughts, and our feelings. So this is the, these are the basics of the three principles. Now, why is this so, so intriguing? And, and I think when I started listening to Effortless Transformation and subsequent programs about the three principles, what I discovered or what I heard was people talking about how when they really got this, that life would get simpler and happier. Um, they found that their mind got quieter. And, and, and here's the thing is it's, it's, it doesn't come about through, uh, through learning techniques. This is, this is actually not a technique based um, modality. 
So it's really about understanding how the mind, how our thought, how thought works, understanding the, the nature of thought and then the true nature of ourselves. I mean, that's so, be another definition of... Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Sorry to cut you off, Bernie. I was going to ask, you know, I see mind and then I see God. So for me, when I think of mind, I think of something like changing my mind. But that doesn't seem like that's that's what they're talking about here. No. And, and I like this is the part that probably gets talked about least when in three principles. It's really, um, you know, I, I call it the universal mind. So it's like the energy behind everything. So it's, uh, you know, it's like we, we're a part of that. Each of us is individually a part of that universal mind. And, you know, when we're in our thoughts, we're not, we're not really as connected to universal mind. When we have a quiet mind, meaning we, we don't have a lot of thinking going on, that's when we're more connected to um, through this universal mind. And that's when uh, we, can, we can have insights. We can have, you know, some people call them downloads. We can have new stuff flowing through us. You know, when I'm in the flow, when any of us are in the flow, it's because our thoughts are, are out of the way and we're more connected to universal mind. Does that make sense? Does that make that, it clearer? That, that clicked for me. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. Quieting your mind or quieting your thoughts so you can hear your mind in a way. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, let me move on to the, uh, the next. This is one of the key things that's talked about. And that is feeling always comes from thought in the moment. So first of all, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to take us off share for a moment for this. Feeling always comes from thought in the moment. Does anyone disagree with that? Let's just start there. Let's see if anyone's got like, no, that doesn't make sense to me. I'll start. <laughs> hey. So I always thought it was, um, feelings are present first and then our thoughts come based on our emotional initial emotional response whether we're aware of it or not is that the same or is it not is it different is it contradictory well uh you know i don't know what the true thing is the point is here is that that feelings and thoughts are really intertwined ah yeah and more in, and, and more importantly that, uh, and perhaps this is a better way of, it, of talking about it, is we often think that, you know, when I, someone says something, that, you know, I'm now upset because of what they said, yeah? But that's not true. The truth is that it's my thinking that I had that is, is contributing to my feelings. It's not what they said. It's not what they did to me. It's what's going on inside of me. So when I say feeling comes from thoughts in the moment, that's what I mean by by that. Got it. So yeah, anyone disagree that no, no, sometimes it's what's going on out there that's causing my feelings. Well, right, <clears throat> I don't see anyone raising that. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Michael. Yeah. Um, I, I'm with Jeff on this, that, that if feelings, the emotion occurs first and the emotion occurs in the body and the thought interprets it. But I think now that you've explained it further, I think for the context of, I'm not sure where you're going, but for the context of what we're talking about, I, I get what you're saying. It's not an external thing that causes you to feel something. It's how you interpret right. your, in that, can, in that context, it, it, it's making sense now. Yeah. Right. You get, you get, you're choosing a response to the feeling, but the feeling is coming internal, whether it's, it occurred before the thought or after isn't really relevant. It's coming from you, not yeah. someone else. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's right. And remember, when I say thought, it's more inclusive than just what we think of as thoughts. I'm talking about, uh, you know, what uh, the, the sensations we, we experience, like our sight is essentially a form of thought. Or at least the way I experience what I'm seeing is essentially a form of thought. Um, but here's the thing, like how often, who here forgets that feelings are only caused by my thinking? 
in other words, do you ever get triggered? Do you ever uh, get upset because of what someone says or does? Right? Okay. So, okay. Uh, is anyone who never gets upset by what's going on in the outside world? Or at least believes that they don't? Okay, I don't... I don't I'm, see anybody. I'm, Jesus, no. I, yeah. So here's the thing, is, is that even though we know intellectually that um, our feelings are only being caused by our thinking or uh, our sensation, our response, our response to what's going on out there, we still often act as though it's what's going on out there that's causing me to be this, to feel this way. Does that make sense? So this is one of the this is one of the things about the three principles is is that in really getting that when I like I I noticed that when I really got this oh it's always coming from my feelings the feelings I have are always coming from from thoughts it's not coming from outside of me I could actually feel a visceral effect in my body. And as a result, I, I, I'm getting that I'm, I'm reactive less often and I'm less reactive. I haven't gone away completely and it never will. This is one of the things they say is, is it, they call it inside out thinking. Like the inside, you know, I know that my thinking is cause, is my feelings are coming from the inside, not from the outside. Outside in thinking is when I'm believing in the illusion that it's the outside world that's creating my, my, my feelings, okay? And from what I've heard, we will always, no matter how well we know this, these three principles, the people who have been studying this for a long time, they say, I still go to outside in thinking. I still forget that it's me that's uh, that the, the creator of my feelings ultimately not what's going on out, on outside and really getting this at a deeper level is what has the has, has the impact on our lives so, so can, bernie uh, bernie can you give us an example of that well let me use a metaphor okay, okay. so if we go back five six hundred years i'm not sure how many everyone thought the world was flat Okay, so, you know, those people who got on a boat to see how far they could go, they were scared shitless about, am I going to fall off the edge of the earth? Okay, so there was a fear that came about. And then when people realize, oh, the earth is actually spherical, that fear just went away. Okay, so it was the understanding that the world is round rather than flat just that fear just disappeared. So it's the same kind of thing. When we really get this at a deeper level, then some things just fall away. The other thing is, is that, and I, I you know, I'm, I'm really new to this. So the stuff I'm going to say that I don't know if it's always going to be completely in line with the three principles, but I'm going to do my best. Um, and that is that uh, only the present moment exists. Well, we all know that. I mean, the past does not exist. It only exists in our thoughts. The future doesn't exist. It also, it also only exists in our thoughts, in, you know, in our imagination for the future, in our memories for the past. There's still thought. So when I tell myself a story, you know, I'm, I, I'm upset because, you know, whenever someone does this, I always get triggered. Those are just a series of thoughts that are playing out. And when I... This is my understanding. When I really get that at a deeper level, that kind of triggering will just unwind itself. It's not something I need to do. It's just something that will happen because like the flatter thinking is going to make me feel fearful if I got on a boat going too far. Once I know it's spherical, that just disappears. That's a very question. good, that's a very good analogy. Now, now I see, you know, how the thought impacted the, the feeling and how just changing your thought 
about that thing makes it completely different. Is that, yeah. um, and I, I, not to interrupt you or get you off track, so if you're going to talk about this later, tell me, but what about subconscious thoughts? You know, this is the exact question I had when I started getting into this. Like, what about subconscious thoughts? Well, subconscious thoughts are still a thought. Okay, so, so, so what is your question specifically? Well, in, in my experience, it's, you know, I, I talk about my feelings so I understand where it um, came from. So I have awareness, thoughts about the feelings that are already there. So if I'm thinking about the feelings, then using this thought, there has had to be a thought before that feeling. And I just wasn't aware of it consciously. Right. Um, so this is an area I'm not completely 100% getting myself. But my understanding is, is that as I really, um, as I start to fully integrate the three principles and understand them better, what's going to happen is uh, I will get, first of all, I'll get insights. That was the last slide I showed you. Like insight is, an, is a natural part of um, when we understand these principles more. Because like who, who here has, it, has had insights in their life? I'm sure, I'm sure we all have, right? Now, do they tend to come when we're really busy thinking or are they more likely to come when we're like doing nothing, having a shower, going for a walk, staring at the ocean? They're more, like, more likely to happen when our mind is quiet. And it's one of the, um, I think one of the important, uh, uh, I don't know, I was going to say principles of the three principles. That's not what I meant to say. One of the tenets of the three principles is the more we get that a quiet mind is going to, is going to uh, um, allow insights to come in, the more we're going to tr uh, create space for having quiet mind, um, you know, more of, our, more of the time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, stopping here for a second, does anyone have any uh, else have any thoughts or questions about what we're going over? We're good. We're good. Bernie, the floor is yours. Okay, great. So I was listening to an event. And by the way, this one event, it was called uh, the paradigm shift, and it's really about the shifting the paradigm in our heads that uh, of really getting this feelings always come from thought in the moment and not from the outside. You know, it's the inside out, inside out principle rather than the outside in. And they spend the whole weekend talking about this. And it, I'll be honest, it's not the most exciting thing to listen to, but I think what happens is is that. Um, you know, I could see with the people being coached that they would kind of like, as they were talking about that situation, they would get, oh, yeah. Like, for example, there's one person I was listening to, her stepson just annoyed the hell out of her. And as she talked more and more about it, she could, she recognized that it's only her thinking that's causing her to be upset about her, her stepson. And she just kind of got calmer and calmer as she went through the coaching. And, um, you know, I heard some people talk about the impact of going through a year of understanding the three principles had on their lives. And, like, stuff just fell away. Uh, things that they wanted to accomplish became easier to accomplish. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm still learning this and I'm still waiting for the big aha, but I also, I also heard something just a couple of days ago that people who've done a good amount of personal growth work, they're probably going to be less likely to have the big aha, the enlightenment experience. It's going to be more of a, a slow, an increase in the number of insights that happen. And sometimes insights come and we're not even aware of them. Like who here knows that they've had some transformations in their life and they, they just completely forgot that they had a transformation because it just became so natural to be in that place, that new place. Yeah. 
so, but insights, like this is the one thing I want to do is just create more space for insights to show up. Because I know that that is the way that it's going to help me create transformation. And I think the reason it's called effortless transformation, or one, one thing it has been called, is because it's not about like, oh, these are things I need to do. It's not about, okay, now I know that I now I know the theory. Let me go and apply it in by doing these, you know, X number of techniques. It's it's really just about understanding. And then through that understanding, there's implications. And one of those implications are that that insights will come that that really create the impact in our lives. Okay, so a question, uh, I have a, two questions. One of my own is you mentioned insight, but um, the, one of the principles is awareness. So is that is that the same thing or it, it feels like the same, but I think I, I, it sounds like it's different. No, I, I would say that the three principles, and I think the one you're thinking of is consciousness, mind, consciousness, and thought. Those are That's the three right. they talk about. I'm just using their language because I don't want to be confusing if you start researching. But I think of consciousness, it's really, it's the awareness I have of others, of, 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 my, of everything in of my life. It's because I have that awareness, that's my, that's, yeah, I'm not sure how to say this, but that's my consciousness. Um, but in terms of insight, it's, I mean, we, we will be using, actually, you know, I think I had it on, on my, one of my slides. Yeah, let me go back to my slide. So I think I, this is the way I put it together. And I kind of, I thought it was kind of cool. So insights, like they come from mind. They come from the universal mind. That, you know, it's, it's, it might be something that, you know, maybe I've got intellectually, but this is getting it at a deeper level. And we could become conscious of, so this is the first and second principle here. <clears throat> but they're not from thought. Like maybe they'll we'll we'll become aware of them. Once we've become aware of them, we may be able to put them into thought. Um, but it's really that it's allowing it's it's being in a thoughtless space, a quiet mind space, that allows our connection to universal mind to become stronger, so that we can become conscious of insights. Ah, okay. Insights come to a quiet mind. All right, that's that's all the slides I have. So I'm not gonna no more slides. Before we so move I'm on, curious. I do have what? a question. I, before your curiosity, I have a question coming in. What's the context? Dot dot dot. Thread to coaching. Thanks, Brian, for that question. Oh yeah. Um, so this is again one of the things that really got my attention so the guy who in, who was the first person who he didn't introduce three principles to me i just found about it, out it through his work he talked about how he studied nlp he, he you know studied with tony robbins like he did all these things and then when he came across the three principles he basically stopped doing the other stuff and he's a coach, like he's a transformational coach. There's a guy called Michael Neal, who um, uh, his his business is called Supercoach. Has anyone heard of Supercoach? I mean, it sounds like he has a pretty successful business and it's very similar. Well, not only was he, um, he, did he study all these different modalities and now the three principles is the basis of the coaching he does. He was also someone that was uh, uh, depressed. He was, he was, um, he was, I wouldn't say clinically depressed, but, but he was definitely very depressed. He, he was, went through a phase of uh, suicide ideation and it was the three principles that helped him get out of his uh, depression and is now, you know, his, his definition, definition of success is to be happy and doing things he wants to do. Um, so like when I look at these two coaches who I now really respect, 
and they have let go of a lot of the tools that they learned over the years. And the three principles is the primary, one of the primary vehicles for the, for the coaching they do. And they, they're doing it because the, they see it, it has, it has an impact on people. That's like, yeah, I, that's why I want to find out more about it. So I can't directly answer your question except to say there's people who, who are doing this and I feel like that's the direction I want to go. I'm all about effortless transformation because the effort, the effort does need to go in and understanding it and taking the time. But in terms of the, the application, there is no application. And in that, that sense, it's effortless. I don't know if I answered your question or not. Brian, did you have a so, follow-up question? Well, I think it sounds like coaching. <laughs> Like what coaching is, is like you determine all those things for people. And I think, I don't know if there's any other, um, or I'm not an iPad coach. If anyone was an iPad coach on the call, but they have an instrument which kind of talks to this, which is the ELI instrument, um, which is you, you go for like different levels from like basic existing where you blame people. It's the uh, energy leadership index. And it says like you have different energies and you're trying to evolve to level seven, which is basically like the Dalai Lama. <laughs> They've evolved to a higher consciousness and like they're one with the universe. It sounds very similar to kind of this, that's the instrument that kind of, in my mind, measures these three parts within a coaching context. I don't know. Have, you got, have you heard of that, the ELI instrument or if anyone has done IPEC on the call? I have not. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with ELI, and from what I understand, it's a, um, and unfortunately, Jim, he's IPAC graduate. He's not on the call, but um, it's a, it's a self-assessment that, that coaches can use with their clients, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It talks about energy, seven energy levels, and like the basic is like you blame people, <laughs> for like, you know, and the, the, the highest level is like what you, I mean, you don't need to evolve to the highest level. I think most of us will probably, if we're lucky, we'll get to level four. Level, it, it just, I think it just talks about, Bernie, this, this, this evolution of evolving to mm -hmm. this, like one with the universe type thing. Um, mm -hmm. You don't judge, you don't, you don't have ego, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Was, was okay, anyone cool. from IPEC that's taken this? I mean, I took it myself, but. Just yeah. Yeah. Uh, David, I, I'm a nice, I went to IPEC and I've, I've administered it a, a couple of times. Um, and yeah, that you're exactly right. That, um, it's a good tool. Um, and now they've got a 360 version of that as well. So you can use it as a 360. It's just a shame that you have to be IPEC certified to use it. That's the only problem. Yeah. I'm not, I didn't go to IPEC, but I've had the tool used on me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So do you think this tool sounds familiar to you to this concept? It, it just almost rang a bell to me when I was listening to it. Uh, Are I, you I, asking? Sorry. Well, I think, it, I, I think it's looking at a couple of, I think it's looking at it at a, at a different, from a different perspective, but I think it's kind of a complementary tool uh, or complementary way of thinking um, mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, I don't know anything about um, the, uh, the uh, what's it called again? I want to write it down. It, sorry, it's the ELI tool. E so it's L -I tool. Okay. Yeah. So the, the um, energy leadership index. Yeah, I can send you yeah, stuff on there. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, the thing about the three principles is there's not a lot of, in uh, fact, there really is no tools that come with it. It's not an application based yeah. modality. It's, it's really about implication based. Um, if I had more time, I'd go through a list of implications that, that, uh, I that I've seen shared. Um, but, you know, one of them is like, you know, the flat earth thinking, you know, that implication 
like understanding oh when, when we get this shift when we we really get the insight for example that is what creates the change there's nothing we need to do for the change to happen and i think the reason they talk about it so lock so much is because we're so conditioned to think a certain way you know from when we're very young you know if, if a kid's crying we give them a, a toy or a um a, 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 something something to eat so like now he's happy because something has changed in his out, out, outdoor world right we're so conditioned to think that our happiness comes from outside and we, yeah we know better because we're coaches and yet that conditioning is still working away inside of us so i'll give you an example something that happened this morning um Nora and I were, were on the beach as we often go to in the morning, uh, just to get some fresh air for our day. And there was a, there was a, you know, we saw someone and we go, oh look, he looks kind of cute. Oh yeah, nice, nice body. And anyway, we ended up, we ended up talking to him, and it turns out that this person is someone who, uh, biologically male. Uh, transitioned to a female for a while and is back. Well, he's let go of that transition, but is now identifies as, as they, them, there, right? So, you know, Nora and I were talking about our experience with, with meeting them. And like, it's so difficult for me to, you know, we, keep, we kept saying he and occasionally she, but this person wants to be referred to as them. But to actually to keep remembering to say they, like I'm so conditioned that I refer to someone as he or she. I mean, if I don't know the, if I don't know who we're talking about, then yeah, I will say, you know, who's at the door? Go and see who, go and go and see, go and see, go and see what they want. But when I know who I'm talking about, to say they instead of he or she, it's just something that's not in my mind yet. Yeah. It just will take a while to really integrate that. Maybe if I hung around with this person for a while and, you know, I kept talking about they when I meant this person, um, it would start to become more familiar. And I think that's one of the principles, not one of the principles, one of the, uh, what's the word? I can't, I need a better, I need a, another word in as well to use as principles. But one of the, uh, you said things tenants to do. before. Tenants, there we go. Because I and I made that word up. I don't know if they would call it that. <laughs> is to just really um, integrate at a deeper level that it's not the outside world that's creating my experience. It's all on the inside. So now, I wonder if uh, I might ask Bernie for some. Uh, practical implications in an actual coaching session rather from your own life i understand this is the experience of you and nor but what's your application in a coaching session and how it what what it might look like so um i've only done it a little bit what i've heard people who use this the three principles a lot is they basically um, have a conversation and talk about the three principles, get them to really understand that, that their, the experience that they're having is coming completely from their own, their own thoughts. And in doing, and having the conversation around it and asking, I mean, a lot, a lot of the questions that will be coaching questions that we're familiar with. Uh, the, the, I just feel as though you know, because you use the word application. I don't, they don't talk about applications in this. It's about implications, which come from insight. So it's really about giving people space so that they start to get some insights of their own. Like, as we're talking, I can just, I just have a sense that some of you are going, what's, what's he talking about? Or like, there's a, there's a quietness in, in, I'm sensing a quietness in mind of your minds here because you're kind of like wanting to get this. This, this, is, this, this is the experience I had. Is I was like, what's going on? And, and the, the, the trick is, is just to kind of like 
even though I don't fully understand it, just to just to kind of let it sink in and let the insights come. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about um, my coaching conversations, and I have typically called it the shift. Whenever you, you know, the light bulb goes on for them, and they're able to think differently, and surprisingly, their feelings have changed. Um, so I, I can certainly relate this to a, a, most of my, to my coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So here's here's a question I want to ask you all. What is your next thought going to be? Okay, so I can imagine that you're all kind of like, you're either thinking, what's my next thought going to be? And then it's too late because you've had the next thought. Or you're just kind of like, oh my God, what is my next thought going to be? Or maybe something else. But it, it, it's a question that often quiets the mind. And what it's pointing to is the, is the complete unpredictability of thought. I have no idea what my next thought is going to be. And so the, 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 the gift in that is, is that when I'm faced with a situation, like I can go, well, you know, I normally, like public speaking, for example, I normally feel nervous whenever I'm getting up to speak. Well, because thought is unpredictable and the feelings come from thought in the moment or they happen at the same time, like, I don't know what my experience is going to be next time. And when people really get that, that alone can be enough for them to go, oh, yeah, I'm just talking in front of, okay, maybe now I'm talking in front of 10 people or 100 people instead of just to one person. Why am I, why am I more nervous than when it's just when it's just one person and just getting that they're creating the internal experience themselves can cause them to just create a shift uh, internally in, in the experience that they're having you know I, I can you know talking about what the next thought is it's something that I've been working on is um, you know, worry. So I have certain, you know, uncertainty in today's world that I have worries, um, business and things like that. And this uncertainty about what the world is, what's going to happen next. And for me, it always goes to a negative place. And for a lot of people, it does. But I've been instead changing my thoughts and saying, I don't know how awesome it's going to be. I don't know what, what all the benefits and the greatness that the world is going to bring to me. So just changing the way I think, I have noticed that I feel differently about the future. You can thank Trump for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God. He made America great again. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, uh, any questions that come up about you know in, in talking about this so far and i'd love to hear questions from people who haven't who haven't asked, who haven't asked one yet sure i'll ask you a question i think it, it it kind of goes off of um harry's question like you know we all have our favorite tools and our favorite instruments that we use the eli the via survey the mbti etc so I heard you say like you, I think I heard you say you wanted to like use this particular concept in your coaching, which is great. So again, I go back to how do you share this concept with your clients? How do you bring this into your conversations? Because I understand the theory here. And it, it, for me, it goes into a little bit of positive psychology of meditation and gratitude and quieting the mind. So how do you bring this particular thing into your conversation with your clients and then have them sort of stick to it? And have them what, sorry? Sort of, sort of follow it and, and uh -oh. um, stay on track with it per se. Well, first of all, there is actually nothing to follow. There's nothing to stay on track with like 
it's really about, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm still struggling to grasp this and, and explain it, is because it's, my understanding, it's like it's working uh, on an insight-based level. So the more I, um, uh, so, okay, let, let me talk about it this way. Uh, this is, one of the things they talk about a lot is this is a truth-based, it, it's based on truth. So the truth is that our thoughts uh, and feelings are not based on what's going on outside. It's all internally generated. And when I completely get that, that each time I get that in, in a new way, that's like a new insight I get, it's going to have an impact both on our conscious thoughts that we have and apparently in our unconscious thoughts. So it, it can lead to some unwinding of some of the, the, the um, you know, the, the, the patterns we've had maybe for years and decades. Um, so in terms of talking to, talking to my clients, I mean, I've done it with, a, I've only done it with a few, but what I'm doing is just talking about the principles or, or at least talking about the, the, the fact that thoughts and feelings are, are all internally generated. They're not coming from what's going on outside. And as people hear that more, then I can see pennies dropping and I can, I get that they start to feel like, Oh, you know, when it, when it's all internally, gen internally generated, then I'm no longer a victim to what's going on out there. Because if my internal experience is based on what I create, then I'm not needing to change the world out there. I can just change the way I think about it. So it's just, it's sharing these principles and the implications. Um, and, but, but, but what I've, you know, some people, different people do it different ways. One person, I just, all he does is he says, I just have a nice conversation. And if they're feeling good, then that's creating the change. And I'm like, okay, I need, I need, I haven't had a, a coaching session with him yet so i don't know what that means um but you know as i said i'm i'm just in the exploration of this so i'm still i'm still learning myself i mean one of the reasons i wanted to talk about it today was because i am so fascinated and i've seen how you know some coaches i respect have really shifted their modality to to mainly using this so i was curious to see if anyone else had had, had uh, explored it and if not, if anyone else is interested, then, you know, I'd like to be in conversation with you as we both kind of uh, journey more with it. That sounds good. Bernie, would you, um, how would be the best way to contact you to, to take that journey? Uh, you know, you can reach out to me, Bernie at BernieKettle.com or find me on Facebook or uh, send me a link through the Gay Coaches website. Um, there's a form there uh, on, on my profile. So there's different ways of, uh, of reaching out to me. So, yeah, I'd love to be in conversation with. Is anyone interested in actually, you, you know, don't feel obligated to raise your hand, but if someone's going, yeah, I want to find out more about this. So I'd like to, uh, like, have a conversation with me one-on-one, -on -one, do, do some of my own research. Not seen any raised hands yet, so okay, David. Okay, great. Yeah, well, feel feel free to reach out to me. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to you, Brian, uh, Bernie. I think, um, gosh, it, it's it's feels like a I I feel like I'm on the verge of wanting to dive into a really juicy conversation. I'm not quite sure where to start, to be honest. The philosophy mm -hmm. of this because it is more of a philosophy or a knowing or an understanding than a, than a technique, or like you said, it's not an application, but um, it took me a while to get my head wrapped around the words. The, I, the language, the languaging is a, is a bit, was a barrier for me because I use all of those words in my teaching and differently to mean different things. And right. uh, there are several things that it really parallels for me, uh, including I heard someone else mention uh, meditation. That's it's like trusting the body 
naturally organically knows how to dissipate negative emotions right this is the the this is what the buddha was teaching 2500 years ago so if you could body sense allow whatever you're sensing in the body to dissipate without reacting to it uh, that removes a lot of trauma from the body mm. but the trigger the trigger triggers are not external uh, but that's different than saying the way we feel about something isn't external so someone who's blaming their boss for pissing them off the boss didn't piss you off your cho your chosen reaction to the boss's activity pissed you off right so that's one conversation there's the other bit of of like more from a uh, traumatic childhood or that the boss reminds you of your father and you just can't take another rejection from your father and you don't even know you have that subconscious block then we need to be coaching to that subconscious and so if you don't know you have it then how do we bring that into awareness and how how do we get that to pop up so we know what we're what we're working with so there's there's all kinds of juicy things that come out of this philosophy yeah yeah um, i think this feeds into what it is that that is my wheelhouse this is what i what i did i think it supports all these other tools that that i use um i, I don't know this is the first time i've heard of this so i want to i pulled it up here on my other screen so uh, i want to listen to what sydney has to say about it and where it's coming from so i could speak more intelligently or at least get past the translation thing of of the language but i think there's a lot of wisdom there i think then the rest of us are now what do you do with it um, a lot of my students are, are from IPAC and do, uh, are big fans of the, uh, the ELI and I, I'm not familiar with it. I'm not trained in it. I just keep hearing about it. Uh, but, the, and then they love how we work with the unconscious and how we work with letting emotions dissolve on their own so that we don't have to figure it out because when they figure it out, now they're thinking differently, but thinking differently mm -hmm. requires willpower. Because we get we get somebody to have an intellectual perspective shift, and they're like, "Bernie, you're brilliant. This is amazing. You're the best coach ever." I have to remember to think of it that way the next time my boss shows up or the next time my mother calls. But then, in the heat of the moment, yeah. we don't pause and think of the different perspective shift. We're still habituated to the old things or the internal triggers from a from a trauma point of view. Even if it's the small t trauma, the kid that bullied you on the playground in the third grade that you forgot about those internal traumas that gets triggered when the when the emotion is felt in the body and the body memory is the trigger it's inside so when you can feel that emotion and not have it be a trigger you're cured this is what this is the latest experts on ptsd that of course there's a cure when you can feel the experience in the body and not have it be a trigger anymore but it is coming from internal. So you're right on that. That's the foundational point, these principles. You have to start with it's not external, it's internal, but now what? So how do we bring it up in right, a safe right. way that it can get uh, that it can get dispelled naturally and not have to be driving the show anymore? So that's that's, right. that's where I play all day, but I, I haven't had that conversation in shorter than an eight hour period. <laughs> so <laughs> but I would lo love to uh, dive into, you know, do, do see your, conversations over a peppermint chocolate ice cream martini uh, with a cookie on the side. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I'll say, Sydney Banks, who came up with this uh, I don't know, 40 something years ago, um, what he came to was is that we all, we are all naturally have complete uh, mental wellness. Um, it's only our thinking that's getting in the way of, of yes. us being that. Um, and so, you know, to really get that at a deep level with someone really gets that at a deep level, I think that that can, that's what creates the shift. Cause if, if we're conditioned to think that, Oh um, yeah, it's because of what's going on out in the world or it's because of my, my upbringing and the traumas I had, that's what's causing me to show up this way. But no, in this present moment, like if I'm, if I'm outside looking at the sunset, it doesn't matter how many, in that moment, it might, no matter how many traumas I've had, I might just be thoroughly enjoying that sunset. So those traumas are not affecting me in that moment. So how do we make that happen in every moment? Or how do we, and it's, it's less about how, but understanding this at a deeper level will, this is my understanding is we'll unwind some of that, that conditioning. I agree. <clears throat> one, I mean, of the, one of the 
difficulties, I think, with this topic in general is that it turns a little bit more therapeutic and less coaching. And one of the concerns I would have is that if we start going into the path that says nothing can be as good or bad, less thinking make it so, which is very much what you're talking about, you really want to unwind the triggering that makes them feel prepared for something to go sideways. So you really is always trying to ask the questions that say, is that the only way it can go? Can you conceive of a different way of it going? Rather than just deal with the problem of thinking, putting their mindset in a different place rather than doing what I think is more therapeutic, which is go back to the trauma, figure out why the trigger happened. Now that you're aware of the trigger, understand that nobody's doing this triggering but you. Can you make another choice now that you know that? That's... I do, I'm worried that it's a very much a therapeutic model, a little less so of a coaching model. Um, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'll find out more and get back to you on that, Tom. I'm, Can I take a step. Uh, I mean, I mean the people, the people I'm following, they are coaches. They're not. They don't. They're not therapists. And so, and yet, you know, we all know that coaching is therapeutic, um, but I'm not going to be working with people who have serious mental health issues. That's not who I, I'm called to work with. And yet it, it probably could, probably could help a lot of those people, unless it's a physical thing. If it's, if it's merely a, um, a associated with their own thinking and not physical thing, I, I imagine that free principles could help. In fact, I've heard some stories about how um, these two people, they were not therapists, but they went into a place where there's a lot of people who had mental health issues. And they just had conversations about the three principles. And they, they noticed how the level of anxiety, of um, reaction, just gradually got less and less. So I, I, it's definitely going to help with them, and I'm, I want to see how it's going to help more and more with people who want coaching, because that's, that's the business I'm in. I'm on a journey of, of exploration. Well, thank you so much for bringing us along and introducing us to the three principles. Um, and if there are, are there any other questions before we hand it back over to Brad? Let me just say one quick thing, like, like, because the three principles has been around for a while, and there is no, there's no formal structure, like people are taking it and then creating their own things from it. I mean, I'm curious to know if, if there's any three principles on, um, behind the uh, I, I L I, sorry E L I, because, um, so. I think it's it maybe it's integrated in a number of different ways already. So I'm excited to see um, how I can integrate it into your business. And I'm looking forward to having conversations with anyone who reaches out to me about it in the future. Thank you for listening and for your attention. Thank you very much, everyone.